So thank you so much, Craig, for your insightful keynote this morning. That was a great way to start us off. Um, yeah, welcome. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. I hope you enjoyed the keynote. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the opportunity to uh, learn a little bit more and connect and engage on that note. Uh, I'm joining you from Singapore. Um, you know, I haven't got my background on. I put a background on on purpose. It's uh, a little bit cloudy where I am. And uh, I'm hoping that it's not going to rain. Uh, it's actually my daughter's birthday today. Um, <laughs> and uh, I have I feel a little bit bad that I'm here doing this, but uh, she's excited that I'm here talking with people. She's very excited I'm talking with people from all over the world. So the opportunity here today is to uh, spend as long as you want in this next 20, 25 minutes to chat about any questions you have. You know, if you don't want to come on and share your voice, you're more than welcome to uh, place uh, in the chat feature, put your questions in the chat feature there. Uh, I've also got a couple of questions sitting here from within the Hoover app, uh, so I'm more than happy uh, to start with those, and then if you would like to uh, put your questions in the chat, you're more than welcome to do that uh, as a way of just keeping the discussion flowing. Uh, I, I'm very, very happy to do that. Um, so welcome. Thank you very much for everyone uh, for being here, and uh, I, I'm excited to to share with you. So let me start with a couple of questions that came up in the Hoover app. Uh, and then, you know, anything that you feel free to put it in the chat, and then I'll give you the opportunity to open up your microphones as well. Um, the one of the questions that came up quite early on in the Hoover app was uh, about humans versus technology. And hopefully in my keynote, you got the understanding that I'm pretty passionate about this, the, the human side of technology. You know, as a tech director for many years at a large international school here in Singapore, and now working with schools all over the world, um, one of my biggest frustrations is where schools go, let's throw technology to solve the problem. And Unfortunately, technology doesn't solve the problem. It's the humans behind the technology that solves the problem. So I often get asked by, by teachers, you know, is technology going to replace me? You know, and I said this in the keynote, no, it's not. You know, the reality is that you will not get, you know, uh, you won't lose your job because of, of uh, technology. Yeah, it's going to do some things. Technology is going to help us do things. And if you don't stay up to date, then you probably will lose your job. That's a key point as well. But to answer that question about, you know, is technology going to, the, the wording was actually overpower humans. Uh, technology has the power to do so much. It has the power uh, to support us. It has the power to um, I think, add value to what we're doing. So if we don't harness the power of technology, I think what we'll find is that it will take us over, but it will never replace us. And I think that's the thing that's really important as well. Uh, let me answer one other question from in here. Let me just scroll up. Um, talking about, you know, hybrid and mixed classes. So many of us are returning to the classrooms in some hybrid or mixed systems. How and what situations will we face in the future? And what do you think we need to get out of them again? So talking about, you know, COVID has thrown us in the deep end here. Uh, we've been uh, put in a situation where we had to deal with it without any strategy. Uh, and unfortunately, schools still aren't looking at the strategic piece. How can we be successful in the future? And it's something over the next six to 12 months, that schools just simply have to do. I'm already starting to work with some schools and building strategy to be successful in the future, but more schools need to do that. And schools don't need a me. You know, you don't need someone from outside. The most important person in any school building is you. You know, you need to start with the people in your building, make sure you've got a culture where people want to learn and then start from there. And, you know, I love the saying, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture in a school is what drives the development of learning. If you don't have that culture, and I'm sure you've been in schools where that, that no culture piece exists, and I really feel that culture is that, that one piece of the puzzle right at the beginning that we all need. You know, leaders come in and they talk about culture all the time, but 
it's about digging down deep, getting down to the ground, solving those issues, getting easy wins and helping people be successful. So when it comes to these situations, yeah, we'll probably face them again. Will it be a continuation of COVID? Who knows? Will it be uh, another pandemic? Probably. Um, and, you know, I'm a pretty optimistic person, so I don't like to think about those negative things. But um, the reality, is, and we have to be realistic, is that there will be things that will make us uh, need to adapt and change in the future. Um, and maybe it'll mean going online. You know, the, the Singapore government here uh, developed their or changed their seven to eight year rollout plan of one to one devices and brought it down to 12 months. So governments and ministries are capable of making change very quickly. It's a matter of whether they want to. Uh, and unfortunately, in some of the countries we live in, uh, we're dictated by the governments in control. And there's nothing we can do about that, but we can definitely influence that by making small changes. And those small changes start in our classrooms. They start in our schools and they start with our communities. Uh, and we don't need to push boundaries, but what we do need to do is encourage people to understand what this hybrid or mixed system looks like. Uh, you know, the Middle East, in the Middle East, the Dubai government said, we'll probably never go back to being 100% in a school ever again. You know, we, we've proven that this model works. You know, for some kids, 100% time off campus and being online works. For others, uh, it doesn't. So we need to make sure we've got opportunities and we all know as educators the importance of that face-to-face -face learning. You know, we, we gain relationships and build rapport with people when we see them. That's why, you know, conferences like this are amazing, but it would be even more amazing if we we're allowed to be in a room all together. You know, you get so much from being around people and that's that human only characteristic that technology can't do for us. Um, so in answer to that question, yeah, we're going to face these situations and scenarios again, but we, we, I think we're going to be better for it because we understand what worked and what didn't work. We have situations in our minds that, that we can adapt to and change from. And we, we have the ability, I think, now to, to know that when we're not in this alone. We've got so many other people um, around us that have been through this as well whether you're an early career teacher uh, or you're at the end of your career, it actually makes no difference. You know, I'm preaching to the converted because you're here at a tech conference, but, um, you know, technology does have the power to help us be better and do better. Um, I've got one more question here and then I'm going to open it up uh, to you. So feel free to drop it in the chat or you'll be able to open up your microphone in a moment to start the discussion. Um, the, the last question really is, what have people found to be helpful in helping parents get around new platforms, new apps, and new ways for students to interact with each other virtually? So, I mean, the, for me, that's uh, a big question because the important piece is uh, your context. You know, the context of your school is different to the context of my school and the person underneath you and the person beside you school. So when we think about what's important, we have to remember that whatever scenario we're in is different and unique to us. So when, as I think about like how best to answer that question around parents, you know, parents are what give us our jobs. You know, most of us are in either for-profit schools, international schools, or we're in, in schools that are not-for-profit, that are private um, within the, the Vietnam or within Asia. Uh, that's the majority of people here today. Uh, and the reality is, if those parents aren't happy in being in our school, that dictates our jobs. Uh, and that's the reality of working in private, for-profit, often, education. Um, the most important piece for me is not pleasing parents and making sure that they are pleased it's about making sure that learning happens always and learning happens for everyone. So yeah, we focus on kids and, and students with learning, but we also equally have to focus on our teachers and we also equally have to focus on our parents. So what parent learning are you doing? Are you providing screencasts to teach parents about the technology that they're using? Are you providing live opportunities for parents to connect and engage? One of the things, particularly here in Singapore, and I don't know what it's like where you are, but I know that you know 70% of our parents are actually working from home. 
Most people are not working from their office anymore. No one's traveling. So people are open to coming online at, at times during the day when they weren't before. So taking advantage of those school hours, meaning our teachers and our leaders don't have to do things extra in their own time is really valuable. So how are you and your school making use of the time, not making more time for people, but making use of that time during the day to provide live learning experiences, even just open discussion forums like this, where parents can come and ask questions. You don't have to have a tech team set up to support this. You know, all you have to do is provide people who are willing to talk, willing to share, you know, and, and willing to give ideas. One of the other parts of that question was platforms and apps um, to support people virtually. Um, and I have a couple of answers for that. And I shared two in the keynote, one being Hologo World. Hologo World is an, an augmented reality app, which is all about engaging, uh, making learning more authentic. Um, and they are looking for people across Asia too, but that's a different story. Um, so I won't go into that, but they, they have an opportunity, these companies, to be providing schools with ways to be more effective. So the other one for me, the, the other key area is wellness and well-being uh, and making sure that, you know, the app that I shared was Clan Beat. And Clan Beat is an amazing app, but it's for students. So if you, you need some well-being learning data um, within your school, which is critical, then Clan Beat is a great one to look at. But what about teachers? What about leaders? Uh, I think that's a really critical piece of the puzzle that parents need to understand as well, is that that well-being piece is not just about parents, it's not just about students, but it's about everyone else in the school building too. Um, and the last piece is making sure within that, that you've got a platform that does everything you need it to do. Platforms right now are the ones that will help you. They'll work with you. They'll make sure that things are successful. And if they don't, get rid of them. They don't need to be there. So, you know, a company like, um, off the top of my head, Education Perfect. Education Perfect provide uh, online learning content for schools, um, particularly for middle and high school learners um, in all subject areas and all curriculum areas. Over this COVID period, they've gone out of their way to change and adapt their product, not to sell more, but to be the best in class to help people. So they've invested in teacher trainers. So there's more people on board to support. So working with these platforms or apps, not necessarily buying into new platforms and new apps, because there's an element of overload there as well. Just making sure more than anything uh, that, that people are, are happy, uh, people are learning, people are growing uh, and people feel comfortable. So that's it as far as the questions that have come to me through the Hoover app. I'm going to open it up now to you. Um, there's nothing that's come through here uh, in the chat. So if you want to unmute your microphone and ask me any question, go ahead. Everyone's just here to listen, and I like that. <laughs> All right, let me let me keep talking because I do like to talk. I, I was just oh, going to say, I was just going, this isn't a question, it's a comment. Yeah. Um, just that I have, I found your morning keynote um, really great and very refreshing because I think the human part of it gets lost often. Yeah. And so it's nice to hear that the keynote speaker of the tech conference has got that at the forefront of his mind. Like for me, that's very, it really impresses me a lot because I think that's the element that often gets forgotten. Yeah, so. th thanks, Tony. I appreciate that. And yeah, I, I, I really do appreciate those comments because it's something that I think is often forgotten. You know, as a tech director in a school, I would walk around the school and I'd see you know, a team of coaches that work with teachers all across the school from kindergarten to grade 12, one-to-one -one device, school technology everywhere. Uh, and some of the best lessons that I have seen are without technology. Um, and you know, often teachers or schools feel they need to dump technology in teachers' hands to be successful. Teachers, you know, teachers are so highly trained in the art of teaching and the art of pedagogy and 
you know, the idea of teaching and learning science, that technology doesn't necessarily change the way they teach. And, you know, a good teacher can teach with whatever they have, whether they have technology or not. And I think it's technology is just another tool. Like I said in the keynote, pencil or paper is just another tool. Um, don't get me wrong, there's technology that I think will change our world. And I think it's a really important piece of the puzzle. But, you know, it's that human only characteristics, those things that we need to be aware of and drive to help us grow and change. And, you know, I'll refer back, and, and it's a nice point, Tony, as well, to the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report. Uh, and the 10 skills, they said that our learners are going to need by 2025. And when we look at that, actually very little of this is specifically about the explicit teaching of technology. Yet it uses technology as a tool, but most of it is not about that explicit technology use. So when I, I'll run through them just to, and we'll, we'll analyze them maybe a little bit here, but you know, five of the top 10, 50% are problem solving skills. Our kids are going to need to be problem solvers to be successful. And some of that will be using technology to help them solve problems. But, you know, analytical thinking and innovation, you know, that can happen from any aspect, you know, complex problem solving, critical thinking and analysis, creativity, originality and initiative, and then reasoning, problem solving and ideation. All of those skills can be developed. Yes, we should be explicitly teaching these skills, but they can be developed with or without the use of technology. And I think to your point, Tony, I think the important piece is our context. You know, I think it's context and culture. And are we ready to use this? You know, are you a grade one teacher or are you a grade 10 teacher? You know, it really is. You know, my daughter is seven years old today. It's her birthday today. Um, I know I'm at a conference on her birthday. Um, but uh, she is uh, an amazing inquiry-based learner. You know, she's in an IB school and, and that definitely helps, but she just loves to learn. And I think, you know, her day at school should not be, you know, taken over by technology. Her teachers use technology to help them, you know, and their mindset, I hope, is always, you know, why? Why this technology is it going to add value to the learning experience? If it's not, don't use it. And she comes home with these, like just this morning, we were playing with an app that her music teacher taught her called Sketch a Note. And she is loving just creating these music things that she couldn't do in our house because her mother and I are definitely not music oriented. Um, we're very poor. So the best I can do is put Garage Band in front of her and now Sketch a Note. And she loves it. And those are the sorts of things that create those learning experiences. So finding the things that suit those learners' needs. And I think, you know, on that note of, of technology as well is the idea of personalization. Um, I think that's going to be something that will be at the forefront of everyone's minds in the next few years too, is how are we using technology to personalize learning? Because there are a lot of kids slipping through the gaps uh, and a lot of that is because we're using technology, unfortunately, as a consumption-based tool. We're not using it to create, to make, to provide learning experiences that are diverse, um, and we're not using technology to personalize. So companies, and, and I mentioned Education Perfect before, who are doing a great job of that personalization piece within middle and high school in particular, where their technology uh, incorporates artificial intelligence or AI, to learn the way the learners learn. So if I take an assessment or do an activity online through Education Perfect, it learns what I know and it learns what I don't know and it automatically assigns me the learning I need or the extension I need to be better. So I know that's just an example of the way it works. And you know, I'll also refer to my podcast, so a bit of shameless self-promotion, but I do have a podcast and it's my way of giving back. Um, I used to blog. Uh, and I used to hate blogging because I hate writing. Uh, writing's not my thing, but I can talk and I can share. So I created the Ignite EdTech podcast, and it's up to episode 38, dropped yesterday. Um, and in the podcast, it, it's my way of giving back and sharing. So I do a lot of consulting work with schools um, and with EdTech companies. 
And I don't really get the opportunity to debrief and, and talk about these things. So it's my opportunity to share my favorite tools, the ones I used to love as a classroom teacher, the ones I see being used in schools that I work with now. Um, it's an opportunity for me to share some of my tips and suggestions around strategy. Uh, and my favorite part is talking with people from all over the world. You know, everyday educators, leaders, uh, authors, ed tech gurus, um, you know, ed tech company founders, people that I find inspiring uh, and a really short sort of 10 to 12 minute interview with them. Um, and, you know, the podcasts are between 20 and 30 minutes uh, every week. So it's not too much. Uh, you do have to put up with my Kiwi accent for an additional 20 or 30 minutes in your day every week, but uh, that can be drowned out by good coffee uh, or a beer or a wine. And that's always a nice way to get rid of that. But, um, you know, thank you. I appreciate your comment, Tony. Any other comments or questions that people would like to, to throw my way? Okay, so I'm going to share one more thing and then we're going to get out of here and you can move to your next session and find something else amazing to connect and engage with because I'm always here to chat as well. So, um, you know, the, you've got my contact details, um, you've got this link tree that's in the chat that connects you to everything that you need to know about me. You'll, you'll find me on social media, Mr. Kemp NZ or searching Craig Kemp, you'll be able to to find my contacts. So it's as easy as searching Craig Kemp Singapore or at Mr. Kemp NZ and you'll find it. But the last thing really for me is learning, unlearning and relearning. Uh, and combining that with um, the knowledge of someone who I look to as a mentor of Simon Sinek, who says people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And I referred to this before, Tony, when you shared is that um, you know, if we can't justify the use of technology uh, in our classrooms or for a learning experience, then don't use it. You know, you have to be able to justify your why to be able to be successful. And the other important factor in being successful in all of this is learning to unlearn. Because, you know, in my job, I get to see inside the silo of many different schools because schools are silos. We work inside this bubble and you don't realize that fully until you're outside of that bubble. And one of the, the issues with that is that we become very ingrained in the way we've always done things. And teachers get ingrained in this mindset of that it's okay to do what I did last year and the year before and the year before that. Um, and we forget about the changing nature of our learners you know, I finished my keynote with uh, the idea of, you know, what our learners are now. They're learners who have not used, you know, they don't understand before technology. You know, they were never around before technology existed. They don't know life without a smartphone, you know, life without the internet. They don't know how to connect. You know, when I, I said this again in the keynote that, uh, you know, if I wanted to play with my friends, I'd jump on my bike and I'd bike to their house. You know, I can't send them a message or a, a Snapchat or an Instagram thing now. Like it's it's just not, you know, that, that's not how things work. So we have to adapt our, our teaching. We have to adapt our learning and our mindset to suit the needs of our, our kids. And, and that's whether you're teaching two and three-year-olds or you're teaching 18-year-olds or you're a teacher of adult learners. Uh, we have to make sure that we are in the right place to help the people exceed and, and grow and scale in their learning. So that's it really from me. Uh, feel free to hang around if you want to ask any additional questions. Otherwise, go and find some other amazing learning. I've been scrolling through the Hoover app and, you know, I can see so many good things coming up. And I'm sure you've got a checklist of the things that you want to see as well. Uh, so go and take some time. Have a look at that. Reach out to me. You know, you might not have a question now, but something might come to you later today or tomorrow or in a month's time. Contact me and I'm always happy to, to jump on a call or, or reply with some resources or links for things that might help you. But thank you so much, so, so much for your time. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again, hopefully in person, um, maybe next year. Yeah, we hope so. That would be amazing. Thank you so much, Craig. That was wonderful. Thank you.